Hi, welcome to the sixth edition of NCIX Tech Tips. Today we will be learning how to install a new hard drive in your PC. Now you may remember that from our memory installation video, it is necessary whenever you're going to access the inside of your computer to discharge any static electricity on your body. I recommend touching the power supply or a big metal part of the case. The next step is to remove the side panel of your case. So I'll be using my screwdriver to take the screws out of the back of the panel. Alright, so once you've removed the screws, you can just slide the panel backwards and then out away from the case. So now you have access to the inside of the case, which leads us to our next step, which is locating the appropriate port for your new hard drive. So now we've got our case open, so I'm going to show you how to identify an IDE or a SATA port. So we'll just zoom in here. The big blue long port right here is an IDE port. So you'll plug an IDE ribbon cable with the notch going into the corresponding notch on the plug, just like that. So that's how to install an IDE ribbon cable. For SATA, you can see it uses a much smaller little connector in here, this black one, and you can see that it's in an L shape. So you're going to plug your SATA cable so that the little L on the cable corresponds to the little L on the plug. Just like that. So that's how to install the two different kinds of data cables. So now that we've covered the differences between the internal connectors for IDE and SATA, we're going to talk about the differences between the drives themselves. So I have here a SATA and an IDE drive. The biggest difference between SATA and IDE is that SATA uses the smaller connector we saw internally on the back of the drive, and IDE uses the big ribbon cable that we saw on the inside as well. So you can see here how the data cable plugs into the back of an IDE drive. Just like that. And the data cable on a SATA drive will plug in just like this. So you may be asking yourself, what is the big difference between SATA and IDE, which one do I want? SATA is the newer standard, it offers improved speed, smaller cables for easier cable management and better airflow, as well as higher capacities now. IDE is getting very close to being phased out, so you will definitely want to go with a SATA drive if your motherboard supports it. So the next thing we're going to do is remove the hard drive cage from this case. You'll have to check the manual for your case in order to find out where the hard drives are installed. But in the case of the P180V, the case that we're using right now, we just remove this screw and slide it out from the keychain ring. So you can see that this cage holds four hard drives up vertically like this. So that means that we can install as many as four hard drives in the bottom of our chassis. So here I am putting the last screw into the hard drive. I've already put in the other three. Once that's in securely, now you can see the hard drive is held in on both sides, and we are ready to put the cage back into the case. So I'll just slide that in there. The screw goes back in place to make sure that if you tip your case, that the hard drive cage won't slide out. And there we go. The hard drive is now installed. The next thing we're going to do is the cables. In this particular chassis, in order to access the connectors, which are on the hard drive that is closest towards this panel, I'm going to need to actually remove both side panels from the case, which is something we haven't really touched on in the past. So I'm just removing the screws at the back here, and then I will remove the side panel just like that. So as outlined when we were showing you the SATA connectors, I've plugged the SATA cable into the motherboard, so now I'm going to plug it into the back of my drive. So this is the SATA data cable, and it goes in just like that. So the next thing we'll do is the SATA power. Now I have a newer power supply, so I have native SATA connectors on my power supply. So I can plug that directly into the back of the drive. Now if you have an older model power supply that does not have any SATA connectors, you can use an adapter to go from a 4-pin Molex connector to a SATA power cable, just like that. So now we have installed our hard drive. So I've put this panel back on already, but the last step is going to be putting the panels back on your computer. So I'll just show you briefly how to put the panel back on. 
put it in place, a little bit back, slide it forward, and then put the screws in from the back. So there you have it. You need more capacity for hard drive space, more movies, more music, more photos. That is how to install a new hard drive in your system. As you may have noticed, that last little bit sounded like a wrap-up, but it wasn't because if that all looked like a huge chore to you, and opening up your case is not something you really want to do to add some more storage, then you do have other options. On my right, your left here, is the Drobo, or Data Robot. What this is, is a fantastic little device that connects to your computer via simple USB. You can put as many as four hard drives inside it in here, in these handy little hot swappable cages. Very simple to do. And what this enables you to do is back up huge amounts of data, and you can also do data redundancy if in the event a hard drive fails, the Drobo will still maintain your data on a separate drive if you put if you fill it up with drives. On my left, your right here, is a QNAP TS201. This doesn't use a USB connection. This connects to your computer actually via the network. So you can connect it via Ethernet to a router, and then you can transfer files to and from it just like you would another networked PC. So this holds two drives and is also capable of data redundancy, although it cannot do on-the-fly switching of drives like the Drobo can. The Drobo, you can take out a drive, push another one in, and it'll automatically start to back the data up onto a new drive. With the TS-201, you do have to set it up beforehand, but it does have the advantage of not needing to sit on your desk and connect with USB. So these are a couple other options if this looks like too much of a hassle. Thank you for watching NCIX Tech Tips. My name is Linus Sebastian.